All right, so uh, popped a fuel line on the avalanche, and uh, nothing about this is easy. Uh, we live in New York, so rusty, nasty, not cool. And this truck leaks oil from pretty much every crevice because it's got 260,000 miles on it, so we're already all black from reaching up in here. The main fuel connection from the tank is right there, kind of next to your transfer case, right near your ABS block. Um, it is not easy to get to, and it was so rusted that I literally grabbed it with my hand and just broke the thing free. I'll grab the camera and show you here in a second. But now we got that plastic clip that we have to try to get off, and it is so rusty that, like, <clears throat> it's not going to want to come out of there. It's going to be a battle. Um, my original plan was find the leak and just splice over it with a piece of rubber, but the hose, the metal part of the line is so bad that that wasn't, that was not an option. Um, and now that I have it busted off in my hand, I'm pretty sure it was the return line that was leaking. Either way, not the point. So, on eBay, we ordered this nylon set from Inline Tube. Yes, I've used Inline Tube before. Um, never had a problem with them, so when I saw it was Inline Tube, I decided, hey, 70 bucks, let's try it. Uh, the weird part is that the inline kit comes with a fuel filter, and every YouTube video I watched online, these trucks have a fuel filter. But mine does not, which is really weird. Here, let me grab the camera. So, there's supposed to be a fuel filter right there. There's no fuel filter. The line comes from the motor all the way back to the tank. No filter. So uh, I don't know what that's all about. Um, I, I, it looks like factory lines. This truck came from down south. So I don't, I don't know what that's all about. There's, apparently there's supposed to be a fuel filter right there. There's obviously not a fuel filter right there. Uh, but this kid has one. So I, I guess I'm going to put it in and hope that it doesn't screw with my fuel pressure. Uh, yeah, not, I'm not sure what that's all about. That's a little bit weird. But let me show you up in here if I can actually see up in here. Can you see, kind of, sort of, the flashlight shining on it. That line right there, if you look up, you can see I broke it off. But well, that plastic fitting, that is the uh, supply line, I believe. So, uh, yeah, I grabbed it and bro it broke right off my hand. That's how brittle that fuel line was. Now I got to try to get that stupid clip and everything out of the end of that so that I can hook this new fuel line up. And there is no room to work down here. At all, my flashlight doesn't want to stay up there. It's just going to fall down on me. Okay, so anyways, as you can see, that's the little hole we're reaching through to try to work. Not fun. The return line, luckily, is over here. So there's the return, uh, focus, there's the return line. So right on the back side of the transmission here, um, we got to get that clip off. And then we can go from there back up to the return line. That is all I'm replacing. The kit came with... Everything, it came with uh, the EVAP canister lines and stuff like that. Um, I'm not worried about that stuff. I think those are all plastic anyway, so I'm really not worried about replacing them. I don't really think they are metal on here. Now you're going to make me go back here and check. Yeah, everything appears to be plastic. Um, if I dig down in here. Yeah, it's that's just plastic and rubber, so there's no reason for me to replace those. So I'm hoping to just take the return or the feed, the main line and the return line out of this kit. I really don't have a choice, I don't think, but to put that filter on because of the way the fittings are. So I really hope that doesn't affect the way it runs since apparently a 2004 Avalanche didn't have a fuel filter. I find that very strange, but I didn't build it. It's the way it is. So uh, yeah, I got to fight through this now. This is not going to be fun at all. I guess uh, you can... Uh, I, you know what, I'm not even going to bother time-lapsing because it's just, it's not worth you watching me struggle. So I'm going to rip through this quick. I'll show you when I get it done. And then we're going to go take some measurements for the Batmobile. Those over there, see how wide those are? That's the first set of tires that I ordered for the Batmobile. We got some 10-inch wide wheels. And I purposely did this. If you're a DC person, you like Batman, you're going to understand the Easter egg here. Yeah? Yeah. There's an Easter egg for you. I saw the brand of tire and I was like, oh, that's, come on, we have to put an Easter egg on the car. That, that makes sense. So we got two of those. Um, just because I wasn't sure about the size, they're 11.8 inches wide 
and it's going on a 10 inch wheel. I think I showed you guys the wheels. They're over here, a bunch of asphalt wheels that we got. Um, the gray one is a 15 by 10 with a one inch backspace. So those will be our back wheels. They should stick out really far. And then these ones that used to be chrome once upon a time are 10 inch, they're 15 by 10s with a four inch backspace. So those will be our front wheels. If we can make them work, we should be able to make them work because of what we're doing. We're widening the car, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But we gotta get those cleaned up with a wire wheel, get them painted, and then um, we'll try this first set of tires. Uh, either way, they're gonna be tires on the car. It's just, I don't know how the size is gonna work front to rear. Um, we might want something wider on the rear, but we're limited to a 10 inch rim, so it probably doesn't matter. So yeah, we got that. Um, we're gonna go take measurements of the Malibu and the Firebird and see what we're dealing with as far as doing the body swap for that, but that'll be the end of the video. First, I gotta deal with this nonsense here. <sighs> Wish me luck. All right, so uh, you can see there's stuff there. Um, yeah, I don't know why mine didn't have a fuel filter, but uh, there's so there's no clamp for it because it was never there. I don't know if 2004 was like a weird transition year. I know it was the first year for drive-by wire, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. Uh, Inline tube has never done me wrong, but this time it wasn't right. I don't think it was their fault, though. I think maybe I just got a weird truck. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was built on a Friday. I, I don't know. Um, the fuel lines all appear to be factory. They were all routed through hangers and everything, so I don't know why there wasn't a fuel filter here. Because every YouTube video I watched, 03 had a filter, 05 had a filter. You know, supposed 04s in some of the videos they show have a filter. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, the kit is supposed to be for 2000 to 2004 Avalanche, Suburban, Tahoe, stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't know why it, mine's different. Um, I wasn't even able to use the return line because the fitting at the tank was different than the return line. So I, I don't know. I don't know why my system's different. Um, I got the main line in and the return line, I was able to jump the bad section with a piece of hose. Um, and then I, I just threw rubber in here to protect the sharp edges and stuff for the hose, uh, old radiator lines and crap I had laying around. Uh, the fitting that I showed before, the small one that broke off up here, uh, what a pain in the butt. Um, I, I had to put one hand over the frame rail and the other hand grab this side once I got the clip disengaged and I had to pull as hard as I possibly could to get that to disconnect. And it actually pulled the plastic liner thing out of the tank side. So I had to get that off, push that back into the fitting, put the clip back in the fitting. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it works. Uh, I'm going to give this like a 25% chance that we succeed. 50% chance it leaks. 25% chance it catches on fire and burns my shop down. Let's not, let's, yeah. Let's see what happens. All right. You got a fire extinguisher. Check. I'm gonna turn the key and uh, prime the system here. Oh man, I'm nervous. We'll see what happens. The system primed. After I got the avalanche out, I decided I needed to uh, play with one of these tires. I ran out of black paint. I only had one can, thought I had more. 
So yeah, it's only like partially black, but obviously the wheel's gonna be black. <clears throat> and I think my, I think I'm gonna have my buddy cut out like a reinforcement ring to weld to the outside of this. I thought about bead locks, but they're pretty expensive. So I think I can have my buddy cut me out a piece of quarter inch plate uh, with some type of design or something on it and put a ring around the outside. I absolutely hate the hubcap looking things they put on the Batmobile. I know it was to give it like a more militaristic look, you know, like one of the heavy duty trucks from the military. Uh, yeah, no, it just, it looks so bad. Uh, so we're not doing that, but we got these wheels and uh, I, I think this is gonna work. That's pretty dang wide. That's pretty wide. So, you know, and it's hardly any back space at all. This is a back, this is a back wheel. So here's the front wheel, see how much further in that is. Um, I had to take a Sawzall and cut off those old slicks. That's how dry and hard they were. I couldn't even flex them to like get them off. I had to cut the ring out. The other side was already, the bead was already broken. So I had to cut the ring out of this side and then I had to literally cut the tire in half to take it off. And then I was able to, to uh, use my little Harbor Freight bead breaker here to uh, get that little piece off. But what a pain it was to get that tire on that rim. Oh, it was kicking my butt, but it's on there. So basically, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount one rear, I'm going to mount one front so that when we get the chassis in here and everything, we can put these on and see how far they stick out because then we'll know how far to widen the fenders. Look how deep dish that wheel is. It's going to look so good. That's dope. I wish I had more black paint, but it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so the Malibu part of our batmobile build i just took a measurement um across basically from pinch weld to pinch weld inside the rocker here because i'd like to keep the floor because the floor in this car is in good shape um look how bad that is that's gross that might be fun to get out of there saws all anyways from pinch weld to pinch weld it's about 55 and a quarter ish um then i measured from the mount straight up to just under the windshield it's about 25 because I don't know how much of this we're going to keep. Um, because the brake system is still in it, I'd like to keep that, like the master cylinder part of the firewall. So I got to figure out how exactly we're going to cut it to keep this and the pedal set and everything. I want all of that to stay because we don't have any of that in the Firebird. So I'd like to keep all of that. Um, across from the pinch weld on the firewall to the pinch weld, well, on the firewall here is about 59. So now we got to go out back and uh, measure the Firebird and see exactly what we're dealing with there. All right, so Firebird. Um, it's kind of hard to tell here, but so from the pinch weld, the pinch weld in this car is really far inside, which is, I mean, I thought it was weird, but it's a unibody car, so it's going to be significantly different than the Malibu. Uh, pinch weld to pinch weld in this car is only like 53, but if you go from this edge here, where it bumps up here for the rocker to the other rocker, it's about 55. So it's about the same. Um, what I'm thinking is this might actually work out good because if we cut it tight here and then stay here and leave this piece, and then we cut the Malibu right at the pinch weld on the Malibu, this might actually just land right on the floor when we go to set it down, which might work out perfectly to weld it back to the car. Um, the real issue, I think, I don't think this part's going to be an issue at all. I think this is actually going to work out in our favor. The issue we might run into is with the dash. Um, I got to measure across this dash from A pillar to A pillar um, to see if the Malibu dash will even fit in here. Um, I can tell you that measuring across the firewall outside, this firewall is significantly wider then the Malibu pinch weld to pinch weld. So, I mean, that's a good thing because if we want to set this over it, it should uh, be pretty close um, or shouldn't be too hard to uh, set it over top of that Malibu stuff. Um, as you can see, there's like nothing here. Uh, I mean, there's a gas pedal. The brake pedal is missing and gone. The steering column's kind of just hanging here. Uh, it's not actually, I don't think it's actually hooked to anything. Maybe it is. I don't remember. Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, we're going to have to do a lot in here anyway. That's kind of why I wanted to use the Malibu stuff because the dash and stuff is still there. Um, not that really anything is left in the dash because the gauge cluster and stuff's gone. So yeah, this whole part here is going to be a decision to make on whether we use this dash setup and this kind of, this stuff, or if we use the stuff from the other car, I'm not entirely sure yet. Maybe a conglomeration of both, 
but I'm more worried about, you know, getting this body over top of the floor and firewall of the other car because I would like, I mean, there's nothing here. So we'd use the floor and tunnel and everything out of the Malibu. The transmission's still in the Malibu. Um, and like I said, there's really nothing left of the floor in this car. So uh, basically right now, the floor looks like we can make it work. We'll be able to cut this out and set it down onto the Malibu floor without too much of a hassle on that. Apparently there's a mouse nest up in there. It's a weird place. Anyways, so that part I'm not worried about. It's the, uh, it's the windshield to dash dimensions. Um, I measured from the center of this front wheel back to about where the front of the windshield is. I got to go do that on the other car. I didn't do that in my first measurements to kind of see, you know, where the firewall is going to land exactly because they're, they're completely different. They're, they are, but they aren't. I mean, you can see the motor sits back pretty far in here. Um, yeah. And I don't know about, you know, wipers are going to be an issue whether we we will probably end up using the wiper system for the Firebird because it lines up with the Firebird windshield and we'd like to keep this cowl piece. So we might end up cutting the Malibu firewall down a little and trying to mate that master cylinder that's already on that firewall to this firewall. We're going to have to figure that part out. There's going to be some fabrication definitely right in this area. Um, but it's more a matter of getting all of this stuff to fit over that stuff. Plus, you know, our hood hinges. Luckily on this car, they mount to the fender, but we're going to have to keep all of this because we want to use all this stuff. It's still here. It still works. Um, yeah. I mean, we could do a lift off hood, I guess, with hood pins, but I'd really like to keep a lot of the stuff because the point is to, it's not the Batmobile. It's just going to kind of look like a Batmobile. So functionality you know, this isn't a movie set. You want to be able to open the hood and check out the motor and stuff. We're going to want to be able to open the doors, which you can't do on the Batmobile from the movie. So we're going to have to change some things to make it work. But putting it on to the G-body chassis is going to be a, a help. You know, hopefully we can keep inner fenders off of this car and make them work. Uh, but I think from my measurements that we are in pretty good shape. Oh, sorry. For making it making it work there's the front wheel to the the wheels wheel center to 32 i didn't really write down here to the front windshield uh yeah i gotta take some more firewall measurements and i gotta measure across this dash and see how wide this dash is well we have a problem the center line from this wheel to the front of the windshield here is only about 20 inches and on the Firebird, it's 32 inches. That's 12 inches of difference. So from the front of this dash to the center line of that wheel, it's only 20, 20, 21 inches. Oof. So, yeah. Um, the dash is only 55 wide in this. So technically, we probably could have made it work. But, I mean, let's be real. It's pretty busted up. It's not in that great of shape. And, I mean, the cluster's gone. They just cut the wire. Oh, great. They just cut the wires for lots of stuff. Uh, so, unfortunately, we might not be able to use the dash. We might not even be able to use the floor. Um, let me look up under here. What do we got? How do these pedals mount? Okay. So, that one's mounted to the firewall. And this one appears to be mostly mounted to the firewall. So maybe, maybe we can just cut this piece out of the firewall here and just leave this chunk hanging here and cut everything else off and take it off, leave the floor and then uh, figure it out from there. I think we're going to have to use the dash and stuff that's in the Firebird, even though it's not in great shape. We'll end up tinning, tinning over most of it, probably, to build a new dash in there. But, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to use any of the firewall of this car. So that sucks. Just because the, the, the Firebird body sits so much further back than this does. Um, yeah, um, I'm, hopefully we can use most of the floor still. I don't know. Depends what it's shaped like after we get this seat out of here. Hopefully it's flat. What's it look like? Oh, it hits the trailer. Cool. 
yeah uh hopefully we can just pull the seats out and cut and leave the whole floor in the tunnel and then we'll just trim it we're gonna have to trim it to fit the firebird we'll just cut the floor out of the firebird and hopefully you know we can set it on there um i am a little worried about motor placement because i feel like the motor and transmission and everything are going to be way further forward than they would normally be in the Firebird. So that might change our transmission. We might have to move stuff back, which isn't that big a deal because we can just, you know, we can move motor mounts back in the chassis. We can move the motor, which will help the car actually handle better. But we might have to move this stuff back because what about shifter location, you know? Um, this shifter was on the column. It's gone. I was just going to put one on the floor, which isn't that big a deal, except now I don't know where the f that's going to line up. You know, It's all stuff we're going to have to deal with when we get to fabricating that part of it. Uh, I think there's a drive shaft in this car. At least I hope there is. Yeah, the drive shaft is still in there. So if we have to move the tranny back, if we have to move the motor back, you know, not that big a deal. It's stuff we, we've done to street stocks and stuff in the past, so... Not a huge deal if we got to move that stuff back. We'll have to shorten the drive shaft. It's just more expenses. You know, we're trying to do this cheap. You know, as of right now, uh, the Firebird was sixteen fifty, and this was two hundred bucks. So we're eighteen fifty into the build so far, and we've got a ton of actual manual labor to get the other body onto this car. You know, and uh, before we really spend too much more. Um, yeah. That's a huge step. Once we once we get there, then we're really moving in the right direction. I just this is going to be weird. I don't know how what we're going to do here. Um, I don't know. It might be easier just to buy a brake pedal and a master cylinder for the Firebird. I'm gonna have to look into that. Fabrication wise, width we're good. Uh, it's just location of firewall stuff. If we keep all the Firebird stuff, then it's not a problem. We just might have to move the tranny back uh good times good times what are things i get myself into but hey the, the avalanche isn't leaking gas so you know take the wins you can get anyways that's it for this episode hopefully in the next episode we're cutting this thing up keep it creative and happy building